If anyone's ever been to Toowoomba, it's about 40 degrees in the day and gets about minus five at night. So I'm always well prepared, Tony. Thank you. Our lowest temperature for January here so far this year has been about 2.4 degrees. Yeah, right. <laughs> We're not, not always hot. <laughs> no, it's not, Tony. This one's for you, mate. It's on you. Bring him around. Okay, uh, we've got uh, Corey Richter in number 16. Didn't have a good run in the last heat race that he was in. Isaac Delaporte sitting back on the second row. It's uh, Daryl George on the outside. Got away very quickly and took up the race lead very early. On the outside comes uh, car number 88 there, and that's the Isaac Delaporte car. Well, we've seen him travel very, very quickly, but not recently. Down the back straight away, Bo Oldfield it is in car number 84 that gets up on the uh, inside of Isaac Delaporte as they come out of turn four and into the front straight away. Well, we've got a race on our hands for second and third at the moment as uh, Daryl George has bolted. Back then to uh, Zoe Young in car number 57 and Dean Schofield in 22. They're having a good battle there for fourth and fifth at the moment. We go back a little way then. I think that would have been uh, uh, Corey Richter in 16 has dropped right off the pace and he's going backwards through the field. Out of turn four and into the front straightaway, L. We've got car number 73, Daryl George. Hanging on to this one by a fairly good margin at the moment, but how long for? Yeah, six laps remaining. Daryl George has a quick time of the race, 22.085. Reeling him in is the 84. Very well-known surname in Speedway Sedan racing in this country. Bo Oldfield, the son of the three-time WA Street Stock champion, Jason Oldfield. Big hello to his mum, Lee, as well, that's here this weekend. Isaac Delaborte sits in third, and uh, the Victoria 57 Zoe Young holding on to first place as Bo Oldfield. He now has the quick time, 21.744, and he is reeling in the Lancer in front of him. It's Mitsubishi Lancers, 1-2, and Isaac Delaporte, he's uh, right there. He's done a whole lot of racing, as Tony alluded to in recent times. But the Donnybrook panel beaters, number 88, is right there as well. A three-car gaggle for fourth, fifth, and sixth. It's Zoe Young, Dean Schofield, and Cody McKellar for Roadline Civil Contractors up there in the Kimberley. Sits in sixth place. Further back is Tyson Blackburn, Mitchell Delaporte, Corey Richter and Possum Lawrence rounds them out. But the three of them have uh, got a good gap back with three remaining. George just had a bit of a moment. Oldfield looks to the inside. They're nearly three wide past the start finish line. And Delaporte, you've seen him race many times, uh, Tony Briggs. He's a great little peddler. Plenty of laps here at Colleen. He's right in amongst it. He certainly is. And we watch Bo Oldfield as they go into the back straightaway now. Bo Oldfield on the outside of Daryl George. He's uh, got a good line there, and he's going to get a good bit of drive out of turn number four and into the front straightaway. Could be a new leader as he crosses the line. It's going to be close, and yes, he has hit the lead, but he's got some work to do because Daryl George is fighting back on. He's gone back to the race lead, and he's cut, shut the gate there for Bo Oldfield. Isaac Delaporte in a bit of trouble. He's uh, just lost some ground. There may be a problem with uh, Isaac Delaporte's car as we watch the, uh, the next three coming into play. Bo Oldfield now looking at the back of Daryl George again. This is going to be an interesting one, Alan. It's uh, getting close as we get to the finish of this one with a lap to go on the final lap, in fact. And here goes Bo Oldfield up on the inside of Daryl George as they head on down the Griffin Strait for the final time. Bo Oldfield trying to send Daryl George into the turn too quickly. Daryl George has had the break hard. Here comes Bo Oldfield up on the inside, and it's Daryl George that gets the win. Bo Oldfield, Isaac Delaporte, so young it is. Then back to number 22, Dean Schofield, Cody McKellar, Tyson Blackburn, Mitchell Delaporte. That's about how they're going to finish the race. And, uh, boy, that was probably the closest finish of the night, L, between uh, first and second. Yeah, it was indeed, uh, Tony. What a battle. And uh, those two guys, Daryl, George, Bo Olford, done plenty of racing together at uh, the Allenbrook Speedway. In years gone by, Daryl's pretty happy. He's got the hand out the window waving to the, some of his supporters down there in turn four. Well, here's a happy winner, Daryl George. Congratulations on your win in heat race number six. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, I'd just first like to say sorry to Bo for giving him a bit of a push, but I had to move to that low line because we got a broken fuel line and it's missing and farting and carrying on. Um, huge thank you to Dad and Uncle Ben and Laurie, the boys, for trying to get me back out there just then. Um, Mum, Pop, Gabby, everyone else, and sorry to Bo again.
Good on you, mate. Real class there from Daryl George. How about a collie some noise for your winner in heat race number six? And uh, the 133 of Lexi Smith. And your fifth and final row with the 63 of Bryden Southwell and the eight car out of Narragin. Brody Day, your 10 starters for this heat race number seven. All of our heat races this weekend, 20 of them in total, all over eight laps. Our two B mains tomorrow night, Tony, will be 20 laps in duration in the uh, the main event, 25 laps. It actually, yeah, that's uh, just going to be a sensational night, Alan, to finish it all off, isn't it? Uh, two 20 lappers. Wow, that's going to be hard work for the kids, uh, kids out there. They'll finish nice and early tomorrow night, but... That'll be the plan as uh, Heat 7 gets the green flag. And Jared Coots leads him into turns 1 and 2 for the first time. Further back, Brody Day started on the outside of the fifth and final row. Is uh, already up into six places uh, along with Brighton Southwell, who's moving his way forward. And Rory Olsen Beaumont, but it's the 77 of Jared Coots who leads at the moment. The 295 out of Kalgoorlie. That's young Chloe Della. He's got uh, the 26 of Royals and Beaumont trying to find a way past Hayden Mortimer in 18. Brighton Southwell and Brody Day all amongst it. Sitting back in seventh is Odin Day from Alexi Smith. And uh, young Max Richter falling back through the field in the, the S12 and the 71 of Olivia Elbert. Oh, a bit of a bingle. And the yellow lights have come on. The leaders facing the wrong way. Hayden Mortimer's clouted the concrete wall. Brody Day caught up in it. And uh, Ryan Harris, oh. not uh, the first little bingle we've seen down there in turns three and four for the night. And uh, unfortunately, I've got Hayden right here. Hey, mate, uh, bad luck, buddy. Yeah, you can't control everything. Stuff happens out there. And that's just how it is. It certainly is, mate. But oh, well, there's a car, a little bit of damage to the front end. You'll see, get it back to the pits, put it on the tools, see what you can do. Oh, yeah, easy. We should be out for the next heat. Good on you, mate. At uh, Albany Speedway, this is how long ago we were talking about and obviously been involved for a long time to go back to then. Well, Smalley, we're not too far away. In fact, the green flag is ready here. Heat race number seven of the national championship. Our live coverage powered by Pro One Race Parts and Jared Coots leads us into one and two and it's on behind Look at Brody Day getting busy on the bottom. And he wheels the XL up on the inside. And Elson Beaumont is going to run the fence. And the 26th the Lancer. And Brody Day is hammered down on the bottom. And he's going to have a run on the inside. And he washed off some speed as he grabbed on the infield. And we're three wide for the lead down the back chute in heat race number seven. And Brody Day hits the front. Impressive drive by the youngster in the Western Australia number eight. As he rolls down, we got some contact further back and they just about sort each other out and the race continues. And Brody Day is flying here, Tony. As we go yellow for Richters who's turned around in three and four. Wow, that was impressive, Tony. As they went three wide in the back straight. Absolutely, and uh, we're just watching the action there. That that they might be a bit lucky with that car spinning, but Bryden Southwell did force his way through on the inside here with a uh, very strong passing move. I think he may find himself in a little bit of uh, discussion with the steward over that. We'll have to wait and see. Jared Coots in the hunter number 77 will be hunted. As we roll through one and two through Cardinal's corner, look at Brody Day. He's very racy, switches to the outside, and he's going to have another crack at the lead here in the national championship. Coots, your leader. Brody Day is second. Elson Beaumont is right there. Look at Brody Day off the corner. He sticks it on the bottom in the eight, and it sticks like glue. And Brody Day will take over the lead in heat race number seven, Al. He will indeed, the young fellow, the grandson of Frank Corker, a long time SSA Street Stock competitor here in WA. Fantastic Speedway family from Narragin as well. Some Beaumont and Coots bang wheels. Pretty heavy contact on the exit of turn four. And Elson Beaumont just checked up out of the throttle a little bit just to make sure the steering was okay as he uh, entered turn number one. Car showing uh, a few signs of uh, so a few effects from that contact at Southwell. Doak and uh, also Lexi Smith having a good battle for fourth, fifth and sixth. But Brody Day, he's out in front. The Corker uh, Carpentry, number eight, with three to run. Goes quick time. 
On lap number five, 21.936. 77 of Jared Coots from the Nickel Bay Speedway Club in Caratha for our East Coast viewers. That's about 1,600 kilometres north of Perth. So uh, nearly 2,000 kilometres one way to be here this weekend. The, uh, the Coots race team sitting in second from Royal St. Beaumont, Brighton Southwell, Elton Doak, and Lexi Smith, Lightner Stern for fourth, fifth, and sixth. With uh, two laps remaining in uh, Brody Day, he's getting quicker and quicker as this race goes on. 21.831 on lap number six with one to run. Oh, an impressive drive, Brody Day. The car was dynamite on the bottom. It stuck to the pole line. And he opens up a big lead. He's a couple of seconds ahead of Jared Coots as he fires off. Down into three and four for the final time. The checkered flag starts to wave as the temperature starts to go down. And the temperature on the track goes up. Brody Day will win. Jared Coots just ahead of Wilson Beaumont. Southwell will be home in fourth. Aiden Doak, Lexi Smith, Chloe Della. And the battle for the, the very last positions ends up on the infield and we go yellow for Earl and Richter in heat race number seven. Well, boy, oh boy, you've got to be careful on the infield. That's why everyone's uh, sitting well back in the uh, track. So uh, number 26 there, Rory Olsen Beaumont, uh, asking some questions down there to see uh, if he can better his position. I don't think you'll get anywhere, Earl. Definitely not. Ryan Harris has got Brody Day. Terrific job, Brody. What a race. Yeah, it was a great race. That number 77 put up a great fight. Um, uh, so did um, Rory Olsen Beaumont, the number 26 car. Yeah, it was a great race. Better thank everyone involved, mate. Uh, yeah, I'd like to thank Dad. All my sponsors. Uh, you can't race without any of the sponsors or the people that help you. Um, everyone that works on the track. It was a great track tonight. Yeah. Good on you, mate. Congratulations. How about it, folks? Put your hands together for Brody Day. And Smallick, next heat. They just keep rolling out of the gate. It was impressive in his opening outing with a heat win. In the 121 charade will come from the back of the bus. This is heat race number eight, brought to you by Thompson's Auto Parts. Well, here they come. This guy was dynamite off the back row in the earlier heat race, and he starts from the front. And we go green in heat race number eight of the national championship. Cracking start. They're right across the racetrack, further down in the field. Look at Chelsea Gwen right up on the on the concrete. I think he'll try four wide there down the back straight. And Jai Irving has a car length over John T. Barnsey, who's right there and ready to pounce. Curtis Blackburn, who had some problems earlier on, and got caught up as Barnsby goes to the inside. And they bang panels down the back chute, and Barnsby is your race leader. Irving fights back. He's going to have to merge. He'll get off the brake and switch back to the bottom. That's impressive. But Barnsby was ready for that. And Jaunty Barnsby's your race leader, Tony. Yeah. In race number eight. And I'm looking at Blackburn out there. He only went out wide, but he got caught up in a little bit of bouncy stuff, and he's gone back a bit now. But uh, certainly uh, Jaunty uh, Barnsby doing a great job out there, all the way up from Manjum Up Speedway too, which is about 130, 40 k south of us. Down the front straight away, Jonty Barnsby, our uh, race leader. Back then to Jai Irving, Curtis Blackburn, Isaac Davies. Then it's Chelsea Gwynn, Mitchell Baker, Lisa, uh, Alicia Cooper. Taj Vanzetti's back there as well. As we head on down the back straight away, this uh, front four are bunching up tight again. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Have a look at the action coming out of turn number four and into the front straight away. Joe, oh, Jai. Oh, that was close, Jai Irving. Clipped the back end of Jonty Barnsby there. Put him offline and he's lost the race lead now. That was a bit hairy stuff there, Ryan. Well, very hairy indeed. But Curtis Blackburn is absolutely flying here. Out in front, he persisted with the outside run. And it's held off and paid off at this point as Irving goes to the inside with three laps to run, Al. Yeah, three to run, and Curtis Blackburn, he's uh, wheeled his way to the front. Look at the time, 21.824, the quick time of the race. 
There's uh, Mitchell Baker's done a pretty tidy job to get up into fifth place as well. Barnsby got a bit untidy on the exit of turn four. Seriously inconvenient. Isaac Davies, who loses a couple of spots. Irving goes to third. Mitchell Baker is now in fourth. Unbelievable stuff from the nine car out of Geraldton. Chelsea Gwen out of South Australia in the mix as well. They're nearly three wide for second as we're coming to the white flag. White flag is out for Curtis Blackburn, but the action is further back. Lutup Mitchell Baker, a heat one winner. Has a look on the inside of Jonty Barnsby. Terrific battle here in the junior sedan. Your leader is gone. And you'd think home and hose, but this battle pack for second through to fifth is impressive. Curtis Blackburn will win. Barnsby was hanging on. Baker goes to the outside and it's a run to the flag and Barnsby gets second. Baker will get, will be home in third position. Another great bank for points of him. Isaac Davies will be home in fourth position. Jai Irving fifth. Gwen Vanzetti, Cooper, McNally and Ferrero is how they finish heat race number eight. But how about some noise for Curtis Blackburn? Curtis, congratulations. You get a fantastic winner's check. What a ride, mate. Yeah, it was a bit hectic. The car was getting a bit hot, so I had to start watching it and I was trying to count the laps to wait for the race to finish. That was awesome, though, but you stuck at the top and you made it pay off. Yeah, I think the car setup's going really good and it's just new motors holding in and yeah it's going good well congratulations good luck for the rest of the night mate thank you good job by curtis blackburn who gets the win as the next heat rolls out and it's another cracker coming your way young girls so uh, that's a incredible mix isn't it yeah it's great to see and uh we've and we've had one and had a win yeah and we've had a number of uh female competitors graduate from junior sedans into the senior ranks as well. One that springs to mind uh, most prominently was uh, Veronica McCann, who is uh, now racing very well in the senior ranks. That's for sure as the uh, green lights come down. Underway in there, two and three and four wide into turn number one. Riley Hanson, he will uh, lead him out of turn two. The young fella out of Calabaran as uh, further back, Kane Delatoni has come from P10 up into fourth place in Canama 95. Yeah, well, I think it was Olivia Smith, wasn't it, that uh, took off very slowly there, and the whole field went past. When I watched them going into turn one the first time, they were actually five wide, which is an incredible sight to see. But uh, in each of the heat races so far, Alan, we've seen some absolutely fantastic racing, and it's Riley Hanson that's leading them now down into the back straightaway. And I'm watching it, uh, Matthew Thompson there in car number 15 has come right up on his tail now, and Joshua Hearn is not too far back behind and look at the uh, pack there one to six is absolutely tightened up down the front straight away car number 87 Riley Hansen is being mobbed and he's got a freight train of cars right behind him and I'll tell you what he's got to keep it straight as he goes through the turns down the back straight away and third on uh, times in the practice last night was young Matthew Thompson sitting in second place at the moment oh and he's got a little bit of a nudge there from Kane Della coming out of uh, turn number four but he's still okay. Kane Della goes underneath of uh, Matthew Thompson, who shoots through. Wow, boy, oh boy, do you see that move down there, Earl? Oh. Yeah, I think Riley Hanson might have just had a bit of a moment in turns one and two. The car might have just uh, coughed a little bit, and Matthew Thompson ducked to the inside in the 15 car, the third generation Speedway sedan driver from the Bunbury Car Club. He now leads heat number nine. So they come past the start finish line. It's the penultimate heat of the second round. Riley Hanson's going okay. He's uh, got the car. Pointing in the right direction as we got uh, one around. Turns uh, three and four. And it's uh, Tyler Steele in the 75 sitting down there. It's, uh, green lights are going to stay on. She's inside the racetrack as uh, Riley Hansen is now slowing again on the exit of turn four. Drew Flatman and Jai Pack go either side of, of uh, Hansen, who's now fell back to sixth place. And Matthew Thompson's getting quicker and quicker as the race goes on. 21.855 the last time around. He's uh, stormed his way through the field. Kane Della from P10 is up in second now from Joshua Hearn. Drew Flatman is in fourth. Flatman got the car uh, a little bit sideways on the exit of four. Jai Pack going to the outside in 78 with uh, two to run. And once again, Matthew Thompson lowers his quickest time. 21.708 for car 15. As he uh, comes into Palmer's corner and will greet the white flag this time around. One to run. Kane Della sitting in second in 95. He's done a great job to come through the field. Joshua Ahern, the Sun City Transport, 119. Drew Flatman is uh, looking to find a way past him on the final lap. 
So race their way into uh, Cardinal's corner. Back on the inside of Flatman and Riley Hanson. It must be uh, an electrical problem or something like that, but he's uh, got the car pointing in the right direction, right in the battle for the, the minor placings, but out of turn four, bring him home. Plenty of local support for the 15 of Matthew Thompson, who wins heat nine for this year's National Junior Sedan title. Kane Delaby second, race to the line for third, and Drew Flatman got there in the S112 by uh, 0.073 of a second from the 119 of Joshua Rahern. Jai Pack ended up fifth in 78. Riley Hanson got a feel for him. He led early with a few dramas with the 87 car. For Hobbs Engineering, he'll be sixth. Officially seventh with the 33 of Olivia Smith. Eighth is a 171 of uh, Jaden Blackburn in the 43 and ninth place of Georgia Davies. Yeah. He's very happy. He's got a smile on his face again. He was third quickest at practice, and he's banked some big points there. Congratulations. Thank you so much. You were awesome, mate. The car's a rocket ship. Yeah, thanks all my sponsors, pit crew tonight, and everyone coming to watch. Good on you, mate. Congratulations to Matthew Thompson, who gets the win there. We'll get a photo with the board, which will be up on Speedway Sedans Australia Facebook page very, very shortly as another ripping heat race comes your way, Al. It was pumped up, and why wouldn't she be? And I don't know the backstory, but obviously she's rolled over a few times because she said, thanks for putting up me for rolling on my head so often. So, well, there's a hard mark on herself anyway. We're about to go green here. In heat race number 10 of the national championship. And this is going to be a cracker because look at these two at the front. Bazan and Awanau is out in front and he's going to lead around the outside. And 24 on the roof and WA on the side and he is going to lead heat race number 10. In the national title, Bazan won an earlier heat race. And either of these two could be two from two after heat race number 10 now. It could indeed. It's going to be a great battle between them. Tanika Webb sitting in third place. You've got uh, Bradley Chan and Riley Dunn behind as uh, Brooks Sutton's limp the 57. Cut of the infield here in the uh, the front straight. There's uh, Blake Owen out. Let's check the lap time. 21.516. Wow. That is seriously moving. And he's getting close to that lap record that he set in March of uh, 2019, which was a 21.45. He's not far away from that, and he could lower get past that in this particular heat race as Riley Jun, like a uh, shot out of a cannon then around the outside of Tanika Webb. Those two who are racing together up there in Broome in years gone by. Riley Dunn goes to third. The Broome Boulevard Cafe, number 55 from Tanika Webb, Bradley Chant. Aaron Fraser has moved into sixth place in Carol, uh, number 11 from Jasmine Arnold. Shatea Herbert and Emma Hearn rounds them out as Buzan tries he may. Just uh, can't find a way past Oh no, at uh, 0.3 of a second between them with uh, four to run. Iwanau is absolutely flying. Bazan is going with him. They're trading quick lap times. Both have done 21.5 second circulations of Make Smoking History Collie Speedway. Bazan runs a little high that time. The battle really on track is fourth and fifth between Tanika Webb and Brad Chant. The 3-4-3 and the 52. As they put Emma O'Hearn a lap down. Your leaders are flying out in front. It'll be two to go this time by Tony. And the champ is motoring. And uh, Blake Ivan now just showing why he is the WA1. He's going to be a force to be reckoned with in this title, that's for sure. And as you said, 21-5-1-6, his fast time so far. As we uh, head on down the back straight for the final time. Or is it the final time? No, the white flag's out this time around. So here come Blake Iowa now. Brandon Bazan not too far behind him. In fact, he's 0.954 of a second the last time around. And uh, then we uh, go back to Riley Dunn down the front straightaway. So uh, Blake Iowa now down the back straight for the final time in uh, WA1. Number 24 on the roof. He comes out of turn four. Bring him on home, people. He's a great winner, this one. Out of turn four and down the front straightaway, consistently under 22 seconds a lap. Brandon Bazan, a great second place. And then we go back then to car number 55, O'Reilly Dunn. Car number four in there would be a lap car, I presume. It's just not showing up on the uh, scoreboard yet. There's number four, 343, three, Tanika Webb, after that big hit last night, has come in for fourth place. She'd be happy with that. And it looks like Bradley Chant might be the next one through. 
Erin Fraser in car number 11. She won that uh, first round heat race back in position. And he's uh, got a couple of boys now racing, one in uh, wingless sprints, one in junior sedans, and both very successful and a very proud Speedway family, I've no doubt. Well, congratulations, mate. Two from two, perfect start. Yeah, as good as you can get, I guess. Oh, not wrong, mate. What's it like to run around here? You seem to be handling, handling things pretty well. Ah, oh, yeah, it's all right. It's all right, mate. The, car, the car's beautiful, though. It is motoring out anywhere you, anywhere you want to put it. Yeah, we changed a couple of things after the first heat, and it seems to be all right. Certainly was. You did 21.5 second lap, which is certainly a lot quicker. Congratulations, mate. Well done. Thanks. He's good for an interview, Smalley. <laughs> Young Blake, as the street stocks roll out onto the racetrack.